Pressure Drops is a Revit plugin which enables ductwork pressure drop calculation without the use of ASHRAE tables, which are not used in some countries. With the Pressure Drops plugin, users can assign specific loss coefficient to all ductwork elements, including those which do not enable using specific coefficient with default Revit tools. This way, user has a complete control over the pressure drop calculation. Working with the Pressure Drops plugin will be demonstrated in this video. We will show how to assign specific loss coefficients, calculate pressure drop of selected path, save pressure drop calculation to each element for use in schedules, how to connect disconnected systems, and also how to perform rudimentary system analysis. So, let's get to our demonstration. I've got this sample file of a learning center with the HVAC model, including the supply air system and the return air system. And I will calculate the pressure drop on the critical path of the supply air system. First, let me switch to a view without the architecture model, so just the HV HVAC model. Pressure Drops plugin is located on the Add-ins tab, Pressure Drops panel, and it started, there's a, just a simple button, Pressure Drops. But first, let me select the elements, which uh, are on the path that I want to calculate, that I suspect might be the critical one. So I will select this path, and now I will start the Pressure Drops plugin it automatically loads in all of the elements that are selected and you can see them in this pressure drops dialog. Here you can see columns with the information about the type name, category, part type, mark, size, cross-sectional area, velocity, flow, loss factor and the calculated pressure drops. What we can see here is that for straight and flat ducts, the pressure drops is calculated automatically and user cannot input the loss factor because this calculation is correct. But when we look at uh, other parts, uh, such as uh, fittings, elbows, transitions, unions, etc., these have the options of user inputting the loss factor. So let me start inserting the loss factors and first I will start with the terminal and I would input the loss factor that I know should be 12.5. The important thing is that if I double click here on this T, it automatically shows up in my model so I know which, uh, which T I'm inputting the information of. So uh, I will add, this is 0 0.75 and now uh, you can sort or filter all of these elements. So if I click on the flow, I could sort them by flow from the lowest to highest. And what I can also do is filter by type. So if I filter ducts, you can see all the ducts, but I will filter to unions. With all unions filtered out, I could control select or I will shift select to select all of the unions and I would add the coefficient of 0 0.01 to all of the uh, unions. So now it was input to all of them. Now let's filter out elbows and let's again shift select all of the elbows and add the loss factor 0 0.6 to all of them. And let's say for this one, which uh, has a higher flow, I will double click it so I know which one is it. It's this one. So let's say it has a different loss factor of 0 0.7. So I will input 0 0.7. So now, Let's select the uh, transitions 
and again I will select all of them and add one value for all of the transitions okay so now let's select all and let's sort them by the loss factor so I can see that I've got still these three uh, these three elements without without the loss factor one is the is the damper so this one will have 10.38 this T will have uh, 0.75 oops let me correct that value and this one will have 0 0.1 okay so now I've got all of the loss factors inserted to for all of the instances we can calculate the pressure drop of the selected path simply by clicking the calculate button and the calculation tells us the pressure drop of the selected path which is here darcy weisbach equation is used for the pressure drop calculation the calculated value can be copied into the clipboard and then easily insert it into, into software of your desire. And now we are back in the Revit. So this is the basic uh, calculation of the pressure drop. Now I will close the pressure drop dialog box and you can see that uh, the information about the specific loss was inserted uh, into the cs underscore loss factor parameter which is assigned to each of the element that was that was calculated this is done automatically so now if i wanted to calculate different path let's say from here to the the bottom one or let's say up to here if i suspected that this was the critical path and I started the tool again, you would see that some of the instances already has the loss factor uh, put in from the calculation before because it is saved. So this means that the calculation is quickly reproducible. Now I have to insert uh, loss factors only on those instances that weren't calculated before. Now let me close the tool and select the path that I already calculated. And if I start the tool again, you can see that all of the coefficients are already there, but the, the pressure drop is lost. If you want to save the pressure drop information which was calculated and write it to each of the elements, you have to go to the settings of the application and here uh, I can check the checkbox to save the calculated pressure drop value and I can either use existing uh, existing uh, parameter or create a new one so I will create a new one arc pressure drop okay and now if I calculate again hit okay these values will be saved to um, each of the each of the elements so you can see here our pressure drop it's saved here so it can be easily scheduled and you can work with this with this pressure drop number now let's take a look at some other options in the settings i can start the the tool first and then, then select the, the, the elements for calculation and here in the settings this is what I explained here I've got options which columns I want to see so if I want to if I don't care about the type name category and part and I want to see length I hit OK and I see only the columns uh, which I which I selected now I will select these and I'll select length and what is also said here in the settings 
is the air density which is used for the calculation. In my area we use the standard uh, air density of uh, 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. So this is all the settings of the pressure drop plugin. Now let's take a look at some other advantages that pressure drops offers. First, it's a quick analysis. analysis. If I change the flow of this uh, system to some out of this world uh, value, and now I calculate the path that I already did previously. Uh, if I check the velocity, you can see that uh, in this part up to this part uh, the velocity is too high and it's not confirming to the local code which i can see clearly here another useful thing is that for uh, for some fittings such as elbows revit doesn't show the flow or the the speed or, or the airflow speed but if I select uh, this part and uh, start pressure drops, I can see easily here the, the velocity and the flow inside of this, of this elbow. So this might also be useful. To showcase the last pressure drops feature, I uploaded another sample file. It's a simple ductwork. But you can see there are many disconnects in the ductwork. Even though the elements are adjacent, they are disconnected, so they don't work as a system. And I could not calculate the pressure drops. With pressure drops, it's very easy to connect these elements into one system. I can just select them, start pressure drops, now I don't even have to perform the calculation. If I close the dialog, you can see that pressure drops automatically connected all of those adjacent elements into, what, into one system. This is very handy. To get access to the pressure drops plugin, you can visit the product page, which will be linked in the description box below. Trial is available with full functionality of the tool for 15 days. You are very welcome to check whether pressure drops will fit your needs when designing HVAC systems.